All right, so to graph the cosecant graph, we're actually going to, it's not considered part of the graph. This is just to help us create the graph. We're actually going to lightly sketch in, so I'm going to do this in highlighter. I'm going to draw in my, what the sine curve, the basic sine curve would be, because we're going to use that to help us actually create our cosecant graph. So I would suggest either a dotted line or something just to make it a little bit different or else just very lightly draw it in there and then fold the other part of the graph to show that okay, this is the actual graph. Okay, so this is just to help us with creating the graph, okay? So I want you to think about the values here that we have for our y's because if we take the reciprocal of them, that's how we're gonna draw or create our cosecant graph. So, I'm sorry, once again, let's talk about this. We know the period is gonna be two pi, just like it was for sine and cosine. So you may wanna make a note about that too. If you think about reciprocals, if we have, um, if we think about these y values right here, all of those y values for the, and this particular graph on the sine graph are zero. If we take the reciprocal of zero, we're going to get basically one over zero. In other words, it's undefined. In other words, it's asymptote. So anywhere that you see on this sine graph that the graph is crossing the x-axis for the cosecant graph, it's an asymptote. So there are three asymptotes on this particular graph. There's an asymptote at x equals zero, there's an asymptote at x equals pi, and there's an asymptote at x equals two pi. Okay. So those asymptotes are where the sine curve is hitting the y-axis, uh, the x-axis, it's where y values would be zero because if we take the reciprocal of zero, we're, it's undefined. So it's asymptotes, okay? I want you to think about the value, the y value at pi over two, it's one. And if we take the reciprocal of one, we just get one. At three pi over two, it's negative one. If we take the reciprocal of that, we also get negative one. So those are kind of, key critical points that we are going to draw in. Now from here, we are kind of just doing a rough sketch, but I want you to think about and understand why these points are what they are, okay? We're, if we consider all of these different y values along in here, there are these small, it's these smaller fractions, right? It would be like an eighth, one seventh, one fourth, two-thirds, right? Those are our y values. If we take the reciprocal of those values, I want you to think about what we would get. If we take the reciprocal of one-eighth, we get eight. If we take the reciprocal of one-fourth, we get four, right? So the reciprocal of all of these y values are, end up, are values that end up going way high, are bigger numbers. So the way this graph looks, if we take the reciprocal we're, and we flip these, Basically, it's a reflection over this line, this, this line of y equals 1, and it reflects those values up. So we can reflect this particular shape of that curve up, and then just make sure that we're showing that it's approaching the asymptote in each direction. Okay? So similarly, down here, all of these particular y values, if you think about it, if we take the reciprocal of them and flip them, they end up getting, actually in this case, smaller because we're going negative, okay? So having the shape of this curve kind of helps you with drawing the shape of the curve going up and then just showing your asymptotes in each direction. And then similarly for down here, all right? So what I've drawn in red is our cosecant graph. The, the purplish pink in there is just to help us with getting the right shape and the right look. Okay, I want to look at the secant graph next and then we'll go back and talk about changes.
Um, and I got a little overzealous here. So I'm gonna do the same process. I wanna I wanna um I wanna kinda do the basics in the, the intro stuff in purple and then we'll go back and draw in red. Okay, so pi over two, pi, three pi over two, two pi. That's good one. I'm kind of changing my scale on this one, if you notice, but as long as you're consistent throughout, it's fine. Okay. All right, so we know I'm going to draw in my... Cosine is the reciprocal of secant. So I want to draw kind of just the basic. I'm doing this in highlighter because this is not part of our graph, but it's to help us create our graph. So that's the basic cosine curve. And so to draw our secant curve, once again, we want to, we want to look at where this graph where the y values are zero, where it's crossing the x-axis, and it's at different places, right? If you notice, for the secant graph, it's at pi over two, and at three pi over two is where it's crossing the x-axis. So you may wanna make a note about that, just to draw in your asymptotes, it's where the reciprocal graph is crossing the x-axis. Okay, but our asymptotes are in this different place now. For our secant graph, we're at pi over 2 and at 3 pi over 2. So to draw in this one, it's a little bit easier to start, in my opinion, at pi and get the full shape of that curve. I want you to notice what's going on here. The key on this is to realize we got it. We're starting here at this one. This graph, if we reflect that up, it's going up here. For some people, it kind of bugs them that they're only drawing part of that curve. So if you want to, just to kind of help you draw in the rest of the shape of that curve, if you feel like you want to draw in this branch, you can. And if you want to draw in this branch over here, so this part is technically the full from zero to two pi, that's the full cycle. But if you feel like you wanna draw in this extra little branch here, just to kind of help you get the look and the shape of the curves, you might wanna do that. Personal preference. Okay. All right, questions, thoughts on those? Like answer like a question on my kids or something. Mm -hmm. Do you want us to like erase the first one? Like, just make sure it's in if you have it drawn in lightly, I'm okay with that. If you've got it like bold on there, like I know some people just like to write really dark. Can so like, if you do then go back and use I would suggest like using an eraser and either lightening it up okay. or putting like making it a dotted line just to show me that you know that's not part of the graph. And then kind of darken up and bold the actual part of the graph. That's a good question. You're not using pen, yeah. right? I was gonna say. Yeah, you're not using pen. <laughs> right, Coco? Okay, thank you. Good, good answer. All right, think about what's gonna happen if we have, we're not gonna do, well, we'll see. We'll see where we are time-wise. I'm not sure I wanna do both, but maybe we should. Think about what's gonna happen if we have this amplitude change. And I'm getting carried away here. Okay, nothing here is changing the period. We, I might actually adjust this problem so that it has a period change in there also, just to help you remember, you have gotta kind of look for that. So pi over two. 3 pi over 2 and 2 pi. Okay. Okay, this is a 2 cosecant. 
cosecants the reciprocal of sine. So the original light dashed highlighted graph I'm gonna draw in is a two sine. So it's gonna start at the midline at zero and go up to two and then back to zero and then negative two and then back to zero. So now to actually graph this graph, I'm seeing that this graph is crossing at zero, at pi, at two pi. And then I'm gonna go, this is now my critical point at two there. And I'm gonna draw, draw that curve going up and down here at negative two and I'm gonna draw that curve going down. Okay. Can we just like know that it's supposed to be at like two and negative two? Yep. Okay. Yeah. Some of you might not need to actually draw that other like the, the sine curve in there. If you can visually see that and you know here's where my asymptotes need to be and that type of thing, yeah, that's totally fine. Um, I think for most people, especially to begin with, it's just helpful to kind of see it. It's, it kind of reinforces, okay, yeah, I got this right type thing. Um, let's change this one. Let's put a period change in there also. Okay, so positive one, negative one. Did not copy very well. So let's change this to a negative one half secant of I don't know what, somebody give me a number. Hmm? Four. four. Okay, so let's make this 4x instead of just x. Okay, because that's telling us then that our period is now 2 pi over 4, or in other words, pi over 2. But guys, I just want you to see, you're going to do the exact same work that you've been doing. If, you're, if you do the multiply by a half, Multiply by a half again, multiply by three. Or do your multiply by a four, repeatedly add, whatever way you prefer to do that. So that changed those x-axis markers. Um, secant is the reciprocal of cosine. And this is, so this is telling us we wanna graph a negative one-half cosine. So that means we're starting at negative a half we're going to go up to zero, positive a half, zero, negative a half. So it looks about like that. Okay. So now I see that this, this cosine graph is crossing asymptote there, asymptote here. Pi over four is where we're gonna draw our curve going up. And then at zero, we're gonna draw this one going down. If you wanna extend this and draw that curve going that way, you can. I think, I think it helps because some people accidentally end up drawing that curve incorrectly just because they can't kind of visualize where that's gonna go, that type of thing. I'm sorry? The four go, well, we're doing two pi over four, so it simplifies to pi over two. And that's our last hash mark. Okay? All right. Um, so let's, should we fill in some stuff here? You don't really have to write. I'm not sure I'd even write that. You might just want to make
kind of just a rough sketch to help you remember, okay, visually that's what that one looks like. And make a note here maybe through origin. Okay. Um, we are not gonna deal with the period change. Amplitude change, we know we're still looking at just that A value out in front, and we are not gonna worry about phase shift or vertical shift, all right? So cotangent, I think the reminder that I would wanna put here is that it's from zero to pi, and maybe put a note here for tangent of negative pi over two to pi over two. Um, and remind yourself, asymptote here, asymptote out here. For cosecant, what I think I would put here is maybe just a reminder, this is reciprocal of sine. Um, asymptotes uh, I'm trying to write small and quickly and I'm making a mess asymptotes where graph crosses x-axis and where I'm saying graph, that means the reciprocal graph, right? The sine graph. So for, I'm not labeling any markers in here and I don't know, you may want to, you may not. So in terms of your period, amplitude, phase, vertical shift, I'm not going to give you, I wouldn't give you a period change in the phase shift again, like with a secant or a cosecant, but I might give you some of those other things for sure, right? All right, and then for secant, this is reciprocal of cosine. So this applies here to both your secant and your cosecant graph. And then this one, remember, looks a little bit funkier because you may want to actually even draw your just gives you kind of a quick visual on some of those, okay? Um, period, amplitude, phase, vertical shift, that would all be the same with what you did up here. So I would just draw arrows, or if you want to fill it in, you can, from the stuff that we did from the cook sign and cosine. Okay? Some people might find this helpful, just kind of a quick reference. You can look at your full notes, you can do that but this might be helpful just in terms of quick reference, okay?